Welcome to the next installment of Can Yes Fix It. This is that episode that happens once in a while where you guys send in your broken parts or stuff that just has weird problems and you wanna see if I can either give it some tech yes loving or I can try some janky methods to try and get this stuff working again. And today on the desk, we have so much stuff that you guys have sent in and we're gonna go through the letters here just like this one here. Love the channel, brother. Keep up the awesome content. And you guys have to know by now that that feeling is mutual. I love you guys too. Let's move on with the next letter here we've got from, comes from Ben and they say, hey Brian, this B150M board has been giving me some issues I think maybe relating to RAM. It has a three short beep code and it is beyond my abilities to get it to post. I've tried both Kingston HyperX RAM modules and Corsair modules, but it just won't post. Thought this would be a possible contender for a Ken Yes Fix It episode. Good luck with this one, Ben. He's got his Insta handle there plugged. And then we've got the next letter, Brian. Greetings from sunny Singapore. I love watching all your videos on YouTube. This is an old motherboard that I've managed to save from a junkyard in Singapore. I'd like to see you working some magic on it for an episode of Can Yes Fix It or Can Yes Wash and make it work again. I would love to see you in Singapore and going on a used parts hunt too. Stay safe and healthy and keep the content coming. But the most important thing out of that message is definitely stay safe and healthy. In terms of a used parts hunt in Singapore, if the road ever takes me there, then you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be some mad deals on wheels. Well, hopefully if I can get wheels in Singapore, I don't know the situation there. But here we've got the next letter from Kevin over in the United States. And they say, Brian, thank you for inspiring me to get into PC building as it has become quite profitable for me and very fun. Your persistent positive energy and great content is something to look forward to every time I log onto YouTube. I don't know how often you hear this, but thank you for your hard work. And please know that you make a good impact on the lives of your viewers. A little about me, I've always been a computer nerd and a car guy. I became an automotive technician and I credit my success in that field due to my experience with computers. As a type of person who continually looks for alternative sources of income, supplemental income, I found that building and selling PCs is the best complement for my experience. With two kids at home and wife building PCs in my garage, it's a much cleaner and less time consuming side job that my kids enjoy as well. Choosing to take on a new venture and become a PC builder started when I discovered your channel. Thank you for everything you do on your channel and thank you for sharing your knowledge with the world. And thank you so much, Kevin. I really love reading letters like this. And that's part of the channel is just, yeah, showing the whole journey along the way and sharing the tips and making everyone grow together. This whole tech community, when I first got into tech, it was just a world full of open-minded, intelligent people. And I love that it's still that way in 2020. And I love the fact that it's helping your life and it's helping your beautiful family. Thank you so much. And they also said one more thing, Australia has always been a place I wanted to visit and once before considered relocating there. If I'm ever in the Gold Coast area, I owe you a beer. I'll definitely take you up on that offer. I love me a good beer. Anyhow, with those letters aside, we've also got some other packages that were sent in. Everything here is on the desk. We're gonna segment this whole video into different sections where we first off, we're gonna start with Gravis cards, go through them, see what the problems are, and then quickly see if we can get these working again. The simple process to go through here is to give it a clean initially. Then if it doesn't work after that, we can then try the heat gun method. After that, we're gonna segment into motherboards and we've got a few of these that we're gonna try out here. And then we'll after that go into these two laptops that were sent in with problems. And then lastly, some faulty DDR3 memory. Let's roll that intro and start this massive plethora of PC parts here and see what unravels. So starting off with the GPUs, we've got a massive pile here, but what we're gonna do now is sift through them and quickly see if they either give out no signal or they have a problem where they artifact in Windows or the device driver just simply doesn't install. Now, one of these scenarios, if it happens, and that is the artifacting or there's weird glitching on the screen. I'm actually just gonna take the coolers off that and not even bother with the heat guns because I've heat gunned to this date a lot of GPUs. And the only GPUs that have come back to life fully from the heat gun method have been ones that have either given out no signal 
or given us a B2 error on the debug readout. So basically they're the cards that we're really looking for here and we're gonna pull them aside and then give them some proper tech yes loving and then a heat gun session. So let's start smashing through these cards right here and see what the verdict is. So this Radeon 7950 is working absolutely fine. This is the third GPU in, but it's only working fine off the DVI to VGA adapter. And so this is a thing you can try as, I guess, before you take it to the heat gun. And that is maybe the HDMI scaler in the GPU is gone. And so running it through a VGA cable can still extract performance out of it and can still make it work absolutely fine. So basically this graphics card here, it doesn't need to go under the heat gun, but that being said, the future of the card itself means that it's gonna to have to work with a VGA monitor or a monitor that has a VGA in like this AOC right here. So we've got one more graphics card here that had the exact same problem as the uh, 7950, and that is the HDMI scale is gone. Works through VGA perfectly fine. So out of all the GPU testing we did, we've got four GPUs that work fine. Uh, these two here just need, I guess, a cleanup, and this one here needs the cooler attached properly. Uh, this GTX 680 came with like a water cooling kit that is on the CPU and the GPU in one 240 mil loop. So I guess it would work well with say an i7-3770K or something like that, even on the 240 mil loop, both overclocked on GPU and CPU. Uh, these two here are VGA only, so going with the DVI um, four-way, so you can see the horizontal and the vertical line there, that means it's actually got analog support built in, so that the ports we're using from here on in, as opposed to this port here is DVI only. So DVI-A works fine on both of these, so they're good to go, they don't need any extra work done to them. Uh, but let's move over now to the balcony where we're gonna start the next process. So now we've got all our cards here on the table. Uh, this one is not going to get a clean or a heat gun, unfortunately. It's the RX 470. And when I booted it up, it quickly got into Windows and then said there was a memory error. So this one's just that old that the memory has now degraded to the point where no amount of heat gunning or cleaning or tech ass loving is going to bring it back. So useless card. But these other ones on the desk here, they all have a chance in my opinion. So what we're gonna do now is break clean of them down. And it's just the quick and easy method. Of course, if you've got time and you wanna save a bit of money, you can wash your components down. Just make sure you dry them up 100%. I have done this in the past, but break clean is the quick and easy method and it does clean off all the dirt and grime. And then after that, we're gonna go through each of them with the heat gun and we'll quickly go over the settings after we've done the break clean.
And now we've prepped all these graphics cards, we are ready for the final phase or the Hail Mary, and that is the heat gun. And I've got this set to about two thirds of the way full because I've found that's the settings that's worked for me in the past. And now you want to give it around six to eight minutes, but what, and what you mean by six to eight minutes is if the PCB and the card and the die especially is smaller, then that gets less time. You can even get away with, I said, five minutes on something like a GTX 1050 Ti. But if it's a bigger card like this uh, GTX 780 here, we can give it a, a good eight minutes of just straight heat. Now, for mounting them up, I've got two little pieces of outfall. Mount them on the side without the bracket here. So that way it's not, I guess all the heat's not sink, sinking into the table here. Though with that aside, we're gonna get on the way of heat gunning all these cards and see what comes out of it. So our first card, which is the R9 270, we've fixed this, it is working. And initially I just put the little heat sink on to save time because if it's a goner, it's a goner. But this one showed some response and now we've put the cooler back on and we're stress testing it. And it's looking like it's A-OK. -okay. We are now one for one. And now here we are with the next card that is working and it's came back to life. This is two for six now. So we did come into quite a few duds all in a row here, but this R7 370 seems to be working absolutely fine. So I'm pretty happy, two for six, I'm pretty happy with this Hail Mary method. So here is now our 780 Ti that didn't even boot and give out a signal before. It is back. It is working absolutely fine, giving us some pretty good FPS. And the temperatures actually look really good too on this model. Now, this is the third of the seventh graphics card that we've got back here. So I think like at least with this method I'm doing over time with the heat gun, I'm, I mean, I'm starting to just get uh, decent at it where you know how long to do it you know what temperature to do it on and you know to give the components the best chance they've got so man this one's just like I'm super ecstatic about this one because um, I, I think it got sent in and it's just like the person thought it was just gone like they thought it had no chance so it's a hall of fame and we've given us some tech yes loving too so it's looking schmick as well right on that table man this one's actually, this one, this one's hit the feels. Now we're on the last graphics card here, which I did bring back in a previous video. I forgot exactly which one, but the FPS on this RX 570 was just like dipping and going up and down, up and down. 
Now it's back and stable, like 100% after the second round. And I, I guess it's just that, you just gotta work on that technique with the heat gun. And here it is here, RX 570, now back from the brink. And that's some really good news, because I think we're now uh, four graphics cards out of eight, which is the highest success rate I've ever had. Now here's the four coolers for the ones that didn't make it. And the good thing about this is we've still got the coolers and especially the fans. So if I come into a GPU in the future that has a busted up fan or something like that, or it's just got a really crappy reference cooler or some really weak cooler, then I could definitely see myself using one of these three coolers. Uh, this one here, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really cutting it. I mean, this is probably why that 1050 Ti didn't make it in the first place. But hey, we've got three good coolers in the bag. So now we're onto the magical world of motherboards and I'm going to give these a complimentary tech yes uh, service. This is on the ones that look really clean. And as we um, have done previously in other videos, we're just gonna give the pins a light clean down because I've had some really good success with that. Except for this one here, which is an AM3 socket motherboard. So we'll get onto that and then see if these boards have been sent in that are working or if they're faulty. If they're faulty, we can then maybe give them a more thorough cleaning or see if they need some sort of BIOS update or something like that to get them going. So out of those first five motherboards, three of them worked absolutely fine. They were giving out a signal and everything was good to go. Now, one thing when you're testing motherboards, you can go through them pretty quickly like I do here if you've just got a basic stick of memory and also just a basic graphics card. This here is like a 5670 and I just plow through them. And so the signs that you're looking for are basically, hopefully, a keyboard post in that you at least get some kind of a light out of it. That means you can do some further cleaning. You might want to dip it in water and just thoroughly clean the board. But in this case, the ASUS board just switched on and then switched off after 15 seconds. And it was just giving out no signs at all, even with the different DDR4 memory sticks. So the B150 was a no-go. The MSI H97, when we turned that on, it just literally like switched quickly on and off. So something is inherently faulty on that board to the point where you're gonna have to replace a faulty part on it because it would just quickly go and then it would short out and then if you try to turn it on after that, it just wouldn't turn on at all. And so none of the lights or none of the diagnostic lights worked either. This was just a completely faulty board. The, the good news there, we've got three or five boards working. However, the next lineup of boards here, they are absolutely filthy. So they're gonna need the brake cleaner. They're gonna need a thorough cleaning. So let's get onto these and see if we can get them to work. That's love. That's love.
So now we're finished up with the last three motherboards and the Gigabyte was the most interesting of the boards because this one can work except it's going to need a BIOS where the main BIOS chip actually is because it's currently missing. And so when I uh, enacted the backup BIOS to flash to the main BIOS, that's when I realized, oh, this isn't working, what's going on? And then I saw there was no main BIOS there. So I believe this motherboard could work if there was to be a main BIOS soldered back onto it. Now, I actually don't have the tools to do that in my studio here. So I will keep this motherboard around because I think it can come back to life. In terms of the other two motherboards, the BioStar, that was just complete junk. It would just turn on and it basically wouldn't give out any signals at all. Try different memory, try different CPU, try different slots, nothing. And then the uh, B85 motherboard, we tried that as well. And that was booting up and then it was booting off in just this consistent pattern. And the good thing about that was I could um, play musical chairs with the RAM in that every time it booted off, I could quickly change the RAM slot without having to turn anything on and off again, <laughs> just to test all the board out and see if it was total toast. So there we have it. We've got, I don't know what you'd call this, maybe half a motherboard because it's half working, but we've got three and a half motherboards out of uh, eight working so far. Then the next thing we've got here is faulty memory or memory that just doesn't work properly. What we're going to do here is uh, wash this in hot water with detergent. And then after that, we're going to give it a quick heat gun, not too long. We're only going to give it a minute because it's a very small size PCB. We're going to give it a quick zoom over with the heat gun and see if we can bring this memory back to life. And we just finished up testing the memory and we got some really good news here and that is three of the seven sticks are now working again one of those being an eight gigabyte stick so that's really good news 16 gigabytes in total is back to life and now we're going to finally move on to these laptops which i do put out a disclaimer there laptops are pretty much not my field of specialty but i'm just going to take a simple no-nonsense approach and uh, see what I can pull off here. So we're now checking out the first laptop of the two and this one looks absolutely fine. It did have a message on there, boot problems. Uh, so we went into the BIOS and if you get into the BIOS, that's usually like 99% of the problem solved. And then I saw there was only two gigabytes of RAM. So we installed a four gigabyte stick, took the two gigabyte stick out because if you want to install Windows, especially X64, Windows 10, you need four gigabytes of memory. That's a prerequisite. So we put that in, we set the uh, BIOS clock to the current date, and then we reset the system, and it seems to be fine. I mean, Windows is installing right now. We had to put in our own drive. So I just put in a regular 2.5 inch 500 gigabyte hard drive, and uh, it looks like this is fine.
And now here we are at the finale with this Lenovo laptop and we have removed the SSD, we've removed the Wi-Fi, we've unplugged the battery and it still just boot cycles um, after being boot up for like a minute. So I did get into the BIOS and I did change the settings in order to get this thing to reinstall Windows, but it has a problem where something is inherently on the verge of giving up and it's faulty. Now, this is the problem with these uh, laptops here, and this is a big reason why I'm not big on laptops personally, and that is we've got GPU, CPU, we've got RAM all on the same motherboard. So if one thing is faulty, we've got to replace this whole motherboard in this laptop. So I don't know how much one of these is gonna cost, and I mean, I could try, I don't know, I can try and put a heat gun to it, but I'm not putting a heat gun to it with the battery so close. So I think we're gonna stop there and if someone repairs laptops they can and specializes in this kind of thing maybe they know exactly what's wrong with it but i've got a feeling that it's it's one of these three things right here and because they're all attached to the main motherboard the motherboard needs to be replaced so this one here unfortunately is a no-goer but we did get an m.2 ssd out of it and also a little wi-fi card too And here we are now at the next morning, the conclusion where I actually filmed this last night, but my microphone, uh, my lavalier mic had a faulty extension and then that caused noise to come into the recording and it was too late. So I was like, look, I'm gonna get some sleep, get some yes sleep, and then get thunder charged for the next morning. And what we've seen here is the power of quick and easy and effective methods that work and they work well, especially with the Gravis cards. I haven't had that much success with cleaning in a heat gun ever in the history of this channel. And this episode was definitely a big one in terms of the amount of stuff that we got fixed and working again. So we've got a whole table of working parts here and in part it's thanks to these right here, these chemicals. So of course we've got the brake cleaner, that's the quick and effective method for just getting all dirt and grime off really dirty parts, but also getting into areas where say for instance a USB port or something like that and it's clogged up and you just don't have maybe the right tools to clean that out, like a very small brush or something like that with a thin bristle. This will just get it all out easy, done and dusted. And then of course this right here is the everything spray, makes stuff look good. You can spray it on live electronics, won't do anything. As opposed to the brake cleaner, you gotta make sure it's all dry before you try to boot that part up. Though, what we came out of with today was just a really good experience in that if you take your time with some of these parts and just go through a process of okay it doesn't work it's not giving out a signal what can i do i can give it a heat gun then you can get parts back to life now this 780 ti was for me the favorite resurrection of today where this thing was just showing no signs of life before we gave it some tacky yes, loving and a heat gun and now it is back to life, it is fully working again, and it looks like it's working well. Plus, after some tech yes loving, it's looking schmick as well. Though of course, going through the motherboards, I've been down this path so many times before. Look for bent pins, try one memory stick, try resetting the CMOS, and then after that, if you just can't get anything out of it, even if you try a different CPU, for example, and a different memory stick, then it's usually, most of the time, it's just a goner. I mean, you can keep it around, try some different things. You can even try washing it. That's a last case scenario. But generally I find motherboards, you've got just a simple standard set of methods that you go through. After that, you just don't bother with them. You're just wasting way too much time. And I believe me, you can waste a lot of time on a motherboard to get it working again if you want to. And then at the end of that, you might not even get it working again. So you've just wasted a heap of time and I think the Can Yes Fix It episodes, they do factor in that time efficiency and because you don't want to be wasting a lot of time too when you're um, dealing with PC parts, especially if you don't have to. So with the motherboards, we had a few that worked, but we had a few that didn't work too. And then the memory, that was one thing that actually surprised me because I thought all these memory sticks just would not work. Before I tried doing the clean and the heat gun, they just didn't work at all. They would boot with no signal. But then after we did that, we got three sticks working again. And that Azus P67 multiple that I've got, 
pretty handy because it's got that DRAM LED. So if the RAM is causing the PC not to boot, that'll just flash up and let you know so. And of course, last up we had the laptops and I got one of them, just I think one of them wasn't faulty to begin with. It was just more a compatibility issue with Windows 10. And then the other laptop, it just had a really weird problem where I may try heat gunning that and see what I can do with it. But after I thought about it a little bit more overnight, I thought it might be the memory, the RAM on board that because RAM will cause a PC to boot in such a cycle like that, where it's going pew, 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 pew. And since it did work momentarily, I believe it has something to do with the RAM. Who knows, if you guys repair laptops and you definitely know what that problem is, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And also let us know in the comments, what was your favorite fix up of today? And as I said before, the 780 Ti definitely wins it for me. And uh, also if you've got some tips and tricks of your own about quickly fixing parts, then be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. As always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Gray, and this one's a really big one. And they ask, I've been thinking of getting into reselling. There is no shortage of X58 and X79 parts to be had cheap, as well as 1050 Ti's and RX 580 type cards. Is it worth it in 2020 to buy these? Build them up and resell, mainly in the US market. They still work decently as production computers and I can play a fair amount of games at respectable FPS. I'd like to eventually get into X99 kits too because the ability to use current gen parts on many aftermarket MOBOs is there as well. But even though many current V3 processors are reasonably priced for enthusiasts, a full setup might be overpriced. So I'd like to start by building X58 and X79, stuff people can still get a few years out of before moving to X99. Any thoughts? And when it comes to PC reselling, basically my thoughts are with that is, if you can get the deals, then definitely go for it. It's all about the price that you get that stuff for. And with X58 and especially X79, those are two parts that, at least where I am locally, you can find someone selling a whole PC and they're just getting rid of it. And you can say for a hundred Aussie dollars, get an X58 MOBO, i7 920, or it's usually a 960 or something like that. 12 gig of RAM, hard drive, case, power supply. For that kind of money, yes, you can definitely resell and make a buck. It all depends on that deal that you're getting initially. In terms of the respectable FPS in 2020, X58 and X79 are going to deliver, especially with a 1050 Ti or an RX 580. That's not a problem whatsoever, especially the six cores. And on the uh, X79, the eight core Xeon, I'm gonna be doing a video on that soon where I'm gonna be comparing that to the best of the best from AMD and Intel, and we're gonna see how that fares. But I'm also gonna be giving that a really hard overclocking too. So in a nutshell, yes, can definitely be worth it. It's all about what price you get the stuff for. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, and you wanna see more, then hit that sub button ring that bell because we got also some input latency stuff coming up and there's a lot of juicy videos that i want to get done this month that have been on the back burner and i finally got time to do it so i'll catch you in another tech video very soon peace out for now bye <laughs>